Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Swansea East and indeed all of the members who have spoken so movingly today. The Holocaust is a subject that is very difficult to approach. Not only is it tough to find the right words, it is even more difficult knowing that this is not some distant event, completely removed from how we conduct ourselves today. And even with the effects still so prevalent, anti-Semitism continues to raise its ugly head and is trying to affect the political mainstream once again. For Holocaust Memorial Day this year, Parliament will play host next Monday in Speaker's House to the production of Push, a Holocaust opera that was first performed in Chichester Cathedral to mark last year's Holocaust Memorial Day. The performance centres around the true story of Simon Gronowski and how, the, as the title suggests, he was quite literally pushed from a moving train by his mother in Belgium in 1943. The train he was pushed from was destined for Auschwitz concentration camp and Simon was one of 1,631 Jews selected for transportation to the gas chambers that day. It was only through the actions of three brave resistant fight fighters that the train transporting Simon was halted en route, and that was the first and only time that a transportation train was stopped on its way to a concentration camp. 223 people tried to escape the train, 108 were successful, including Simon, thanks to the actions of his mother. Both she and Simon's sister, Aita, stayed on the train, and they both died in the gas chambers of Auschwitz. We have the honour and privilege of welcoming Simon to the House when Howard Moody and his choir put on the production next Monday in Speaker's House. Members, peers and rabbis have been invited to come and watch this production, and it is particularly apt that the theme of this year's Holocaust Memorial Day is Torn from Home. And I would like to pay tribute to Chichester Marks Holocaust Memorial Day Committee, Councillor Martin Bell, and also uh, the Mayor Martin Bell and Councillor Claire Apel, who have helped put this production together. Listening to Simon's story or his interviews, you cannot help but be inspired by his faith in the goodness of humanity. In the years that followed the war, the collaborator who put him and his family on that train was racked with guilt. As he lay on his deathbed, he asked Simon for his forgiveness, and Simon, in an act of astonishing humanity, forgave him. The Holocaust has shown the darkest, cruelest aspects of human character, and I saw this for myself when I visited Yad Vashem. I was so moved by the actions of complete strangers who risked their own lives to keep Jewish people safe from the Nazis and who are all remembered there. The mass graves of Auschwitz and all the concentration camps marked the end of a gradual process. But the Holocaust did not begin with the gas chambers. It started with the legitimisation of anti-Semitism in mainstream debate. It was instigated by making different wrong. The fact that Dr Joseph Goebbels and the Nazis were able to spin lies and manipulate the fact to legitimise their racist, tyrannical agenda should serve to a warning to us all today. The Nazis learned how to make the most of the new media capability of the day, the radio. And this is happening again in so many ways. The advent of fake news on social media platforms today is a chilling echo of how a lie can be halfway around the world before the truth has its shoes on. The Holocaust began with hate speeches and radio broadcasts. It then developed into legal discrimination against Jewish people through the so-called Nuremberg Laws. Permission was given for violence to be visited on Jewish minorities across Europe. It was incentivised by the Nazis who offered rewards for betraying Jews in hiding before stealing their property. It ended with the final solution, the gas chambers of the concentration camps. We in this chamber today have something that Jewish people and other minorities didn't have during this period, a voice. We must use it and retell their stories and to ensure that we call out anti-Semitism wherever we find it to make sure that this tragedy never happens again. But Simon's story shows us that we can be better as human beings, that humanity, freedom, tolerance, forgiveness and respect are noble values that each one of us in this House has a duty to uphold. Yeah. Thank you.